Hi, Joe here. from Red's Fly Shop here. Hey, you can do this. I'm gonna give you some tips on basic rowing of a river boat and some instruction today. Now this is not gonna make you an expert rower. I don't want anybody going rowing any class three or four rapids because you watched my how-to video on rowing a river boat. It's just silly. Hey, quiet up front there. I've got a surly passenger today. I just might put the nose of this thing into the brush up here. So I'm gonna give you some basic tips. Uh, first off, when it comes to rowing a river boat, the only way to really get good at it is experience. Uh, I'm gonna share with you a lot of the basics. Uh, we're just getting started to here. Uh, we're in the Yakima River Canyon. It's all class one water, which means there's not a lot of mid-river obstacles that you could hit. Uh, as you look behind me, you can see it's a, it's a large, broad river. Uh, relatively flat. We do a lot of uh, boat rentals on this river, um, so our boat renters will probably appreciate some of the tips I'm going to give you. And the best craft to learn on at first is going to be uh, like an inflatable raft. They're very forgiving. Uh, first tip is going to be uh, nothing bad happens in the middle of the river usually. The banks are the danger points. We want to stay off the banks. As we pull away from the launch here in just a minute, my first goal is going to be to clear the bank and go ahead and e egress or ingress out into the river and uh, and get in position. So I'm gonna do that first, show you how to pull away from the bank. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I get into the rower seat here. I'm gonna make sure everything fits for me, uh, just like getting in the car. I'm gonna make sure I know that the oars are comfortable, they're in a good position, uh, that my seat position is right. Do I need to move it forward or back to get comfortable? Uh, and then the last thing uh, is the footrest. I prefer to row uh, with the footrest pretty far up with my legs bent so I can actually get some leverage with my legs when I go to row. Uh, just like on a rowing machine, you would use a lot of leg. Uh, we want big heavy strokes, not short worthless strokes. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my anchor rope. I'm going to make sure the anchor rope is not bunched up. When I need to drop the anchor, I need it to go down and the rope not get tangled. Uh, I'm going to get this knot out of the end right here. You do not want a knot in your anchor rope unless you're highly experienced. Uh, because if the anchor was to snag in a log jam or a rapid or something, I need to be able to step on the anchor system and release all of the rope and let the boat float safe of the obstacle that the anchor snagged in. Uh, when you get into a boat, test how the anchor system works. This one's easy. I just step on it. It lets the anchor out. Uh, it's got a self-locking cleat, so I can just go ahead and pull the anchor up. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to pull my anchor. I'm looking downstream, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna nose the boat in towards the shore by pushing with my right oar downstream. I'm gonna put the nose in towards the bank and that's gonna allow me to back row and, and use my powerful strokes to go out towards the middle of the river just like this. Uh, the boat would never get more than a 45 degree angle against the current. I'm gonna go ahead and swing the boat in by giving it a little nudge with my left oar. And I'm gonna orient the boat to what we call on point here and that's parallel with the current. That's the safest and best position to have the boat in. You wanna be either on point parallel with the current or with the nose slightly in towards the bank. That way if a gust of wind was to push me towards the shore, I would immediately be able to back pedal like this using my powerful strokes. So when you row a drift boat, you might give a few nudges with the oars here and there by pushing, but it's gonna be just like the rowing machine. That's the easiest way to remember. I'm gonna be pulling backwards towards myself using bigger muscle groups reaching forward using my back and my leg muscles to pull the oars just like that uh, right now i'm just getting used to the boat i'm not trying to catch any fish i'm not i don't want distractions i want to make sure i've got control of this boat <clears throat> so i'm just taking the edge off the current right now i'm just rowing against it getting a feel for the water making sure i'm just taking the edge off of that current i don't i don't want to let this boat get up to speed and get a bunch of momentum so i'm just going to take the edge off the boat and then i'm going to try a few things so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm not gonna go all the way over, but I'm gonna say, if I wanna go over to the other shore, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point my nose towards the bank I'm rowing away from at a 45 degree angle. And it'd take me a little bit, but I'm gonna get over there, but I'm gonna maintain this 45 degree angle and I'm gonna move across just like that. Okay, so I know I've got control going that way. Same thing here. I'm gonna row with, with my right oar here to reorient. 45 degree angle this way rowing towards this shoreline like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring, I don't wanna overcorrect. that's really easy to do because this boat will continue to glide. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the boat back on point right here, just like this. So now I'm parallel with the current, I'm gonna go slightly nose in, just in case a little gust of wind or a current pushes me towards the shore. Bad stuff happens along the bank. 
So the next thing I'm going to show you as far as basic rowing is just how to spin the boat. And that's going to be called a scissor stroke like this. And I would do this if I needed to move very quickly. But I would take and I would put one hand here and one hand here and go like this. And a good practice when you're starting, as long as you're in a safe location, spin yourself around in a circle like this. And then practice getting reoriented as quick as you can. So I'm in a very safe area to do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring it back. And I'm on point just like that again. And then I'm going to practice my scissor stroke going the other way. The scissor stroke allows me to turn the boat very quickly. So if I need to orient, I can spin around like this, right there, all the way around like that. And now I'm on point again. When you can practice that a couple of times, what it's gonna do is anytime you get in trouble, if you make a mistake or miss an oar stroke and that boat turns, you're now very comfortable with what it's like to be in a spin, you know how to control that boat each direction. So that's a scissor stroke. Um, next thing I'm gonna show you, is just a general anchoring procedure. Uh, anchoring in the Yakima River Canyon, we'd like you to be able to see the bottom when you anchor. And water should be a walking speed or slower. I can see the bottom here, I'd say this is walking speed. Maybe a tiny bit quicker, but there's no rapids. It's not super deep. My anchor, I can see that I'm not in big boulders. Big boulders, the anchor will seize up and it can become a danger hazard to actually pull the transom or stern of the boat underwater. So as I go to anchor, I'm going to go ahead and take the edge off of that current, take a few heavy strokes, really slow that boat down. I don't have my hands off the oars yet. I'm going to go ahead and step on the anchor like so. And I'm going to let out about 10 feet of rope. I'm going to go ahead and keep continually slow the boat down like that. That's good with me. And I'm going to help the boat stop a little bit. And that anchor may drag just a little bit. <clears throat> Now we don't have these on all of our boats, but I want to show you these oar rights here. So a lot of the guides run these oar rights. These aren't necessarily for rowing, they're for anchoring. If you want to kind of dress up your oars a little bit, that helps your boat stay very uh, straight and not oscillate uh, when it's uh, in a current. So if, you, if your oar blades don't act as rudders, your boat will wash around and make anchoring very awkward. Um, probably the last thing I'm going to show you here, uh, this is... Uh, this is going to be important, so I'm going to show you how to pull the anchor and keep your boat from spinning off anchor. That's how I've uh, witnessed a few accidents over the years take place. Is you go to pull the anchor up, everything's going good, and then the boat starts to, to, to spin. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you what to do if the, if the boat spins on you. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the anchor. I'm standing up. I know my oars are ready to go. And let's just say my anchor's just coming off the bottom. And let's just say my boat starts to turn right there. I'm going to go ahead and drop the anchor just a little bit. And I'll let that boat rotate back down to the natural position. Then I'll finish pulling just like that. And I can use that anchor to reorient the boat so that the boat doesn't go into a, a 180 or even a 90 degree turn would be very inconvenient. Um, but those are some tips for you. Um, a couple of just general tips. Uh, we teach very detailed rowing lessons at Reds. We get you out rowing for about four hours if you decide to come do it with us. We also rent boats and rafts as well. But the last tip I want to give you is going to be just looking downstream and having your head up. Anytime you're on a river, it's much safer and easier to favor the inside corners than the outside corners just in general. Most obstacles get rafted like a, a tree a sweeper, a strainer, log jam are most often going to be found on outside corners. The natural force of the current, that centrifugal force, wants to take you and any debris to that outside corner. It's much easier to favor the inside corners, especially if you've never been down the river or it's a blind corner and you can't see. I recommend you favor the inside. Uh, one more little tip uh, that I'm going to give you is I'm going to go ahead and pull in against a bank and I'm going to anchor here. And I'm going to look at this bank here. Let's go ahead and pan over and let's look at this shoreline here. And I want to anchor near the shore. Maybe we need to take a little rest break here and I want to get out of the current against the shore. Maybe we need to get out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly approach a bank. And I already made sure there was no obstructions down below me so that if I miss the anchor or I don't get stopped, I'm safe. But I'm going to bring the back end of the boat in first to where it just starts to rub the grass. I'm going to go ahead and anchor, and I'm making sure that my oar is downstream like this so that when I pull in, my oar doesn't hit the bank and shoot back at me like so. So the oar hitting the bank can shoot back. Uh, and now I'm anchored near the shore here. We could step out if we needed to, uh, have lunch, 
whatever we need to do when we stop, maybe a restroom break. Um, the last tip I'm going to give you is when you're free drifting, um, most boat accidents happen. They sneak up on you is somebody tr drops a hat out of, the, out of the boat, a sweatshirt blows out, fly box tips over, spill a drink. Uh, some distraction cues it. And then oars get involved too. Um, when you're free drifting, if you're the rower and you need to do something with your hands, don't let those oars just sit and free drift, okay? When you're rowing, those oars can be very dangerous. If you're floating downstream and that oar sinks and it catches up in a rock, it'll snap the oar in half. It can actually turn the boat over. Uh, these oars are carbon fiber. They're very strong. They can actually have enough to get that gunnel underwater if you, if you hang it up in an awkward position. So you're going to put these oars under your legs like this. I can keep my hands free and maybe undo a tangle, grab a sandwich or whatever I need to do. But I'm going to keep those oars out of the water and I'm going to keep them safely tucked up under my legs like that. So those are just some basic rowing tips for you. It's not going to make you an expert. You need some river time and uh, you, you may need some rowing lessons if you're real serious about getting out there. But you can do it. Uh, rowing your own boat and piloting a river like this is an awesome experience. It's super rewarding.